Hello! Thought I'd do a digital painting today. All I need to get started is a good sketch. One, two, three. That was easy. Now, time for some line art. In all seriousness, if you want to see the sketch process, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll upload it to my YouTube shorts. I always make sure to turn down the opacity on the sketch layer. This helps me to avoid lining the wrong layer, like here. <laughs> I've made this mistake far too many times. I've learned my lesson. One thing that defines Adventure Time is the art style. What makes it so iconic is that they seem to use one or two different illustration pens to line everything, which is what I'm using. It's bold, but not overwhelming. Anyways, you guys don't have to watch me line this whole thing. There, that's better. <laughs> TikTok is teaching me how to edit videos. I think it's cool that you could see any random character of the show, and that list is long, and can almost always identify what show it's from. The main giveaway is the simplicity with the line art. It comes across as very loose and breezy, which to me would mean they can add a lot of elements to the show without overdoing it. The line art makes everything easily recognizable and does something that a lot of Western animation is severely lacking. It made it super cute. Rewatching Adventure Time made me realize that my perspective with art and animation has completely changed. Before, it was just a silly show I'd see every now and then, something that would let me relax and not totally pay attention to. But now I try to look at how they structured the storyline and chose their backgrounds, defined their coloring schemes, and think about their design choices. Granted, it's not a professional take, but I'm still trying to open my mind into an animation slash storytelling direction since it's a medium I would like to expand upon one day. Also, I forgot how much whimsy and originality they can cram into 11 minutes. Another element that contributes to the show's whimsy is the color choices. Most scenes are very bright, sometimes bold, sometimes pastel. They do a good job of selecting color based on the different environments they create. You can feel the damp darkness of a cave or dungeon, and also the bright crispness of a beautiful day. It makes you feel like you're there yourself. Somehow, they find a balance between making iconic, beautiful, detailed backgrounds with characters that stand out. I can't wrap my brain around how they do it, but I will keep trying to understand. I'm trying to replicate their color choices here. It would definitely be easier to eye drop the colors from the reference material, but I'd rather train my eye to better understand why some colors were selected. Whether that may actually help me or not, I guess we'll find out. I like to see Adventure Time as a good show to reference for a sort of one-on-one -on -one course in world building and design. They have created so many different places and even supply the characters to fill those places. Each town feels like it has its own life and balance. The locations aren't just places the main characters visit and save from danger every now and then. The creators expand far beyond the main locations, making it pretty easy to map out every region. There's so many leaders, townspeople, and history, and they still manage to capture all of this while having one main overarching storyline. So do you have any favorite places or characters from the show? I'd be super interested in doing more background studies, so please let me know in the comments. It's easy to take one look at this series and think, it's just a goofy kid show. I mean, I did that myself. You see a candy kingdom with a treehouse and some crazy king living in ice. It's hard not to assume that, but there are a lot of adult themes and underlying tones that are very valuable to any viewer at any age. When this show first came out, I was at an age where I thought I was supposed to be too old for cartoons. I'd make fun of my younger brother for watching it, but every now and then I'd catch a few scenes and slowly over time I found myself hooked. I didn't finish the series until way later, but it made me realize the power of animation. The simplicity of art style, world building, and storyline transcends the boundaries of what we know. 
and allows us to sample life in this unique place where all sorts of adventures could happen. I think initially it was intended to be a show full of hyperactivity and tropes, but it's cool that you get to watch the characters grow and change with time. It sort of captivates you. You realize that change is inevitable, and it's a good thing. In life, you have to go through your own adventures and experience it all, good and bad. Be there for yourself and your friends, and love unconditionally, even when it's hard. While all the stories and characters are still wild, I found the ending to be more mellow. More based in our own reality, which is, life will go on no matter what. The world will keep spinning. If you couldn't tell, I'm actually a bit under the weather. I caught something nasty this Christmas, but I wanted to push and get this video uploaded before the new year. I made a small goal for myself to complete three Paint With Me videos before January. This probably doesn't sound like much, but I'm also balancing a full-time job in addition to finding my art style and exploring so many different mediums. I spent five hours yesterday learning how to print art prints. It was not as easy as I thought, but I plan on opening a small shop next year. I only have a few items, but I'm very nervous and excited about it. They say if something makes you both nervous and excited, you should do it, so I'm doing it. In addition to that, I made some other goals for myself in 2023. I'd like to keep my same rate of posting on Instagram a minimum of one time per week. I think that's a realistic target for me, unless the inspiration well dries up, but I think I've been very consistent this year, and I think I can keep doing it. I also would like to keep making YouTube videos. I don't want to commit to a schedule, but maybe one time per month? We'll see. I have some other ideas, like a new series. I think it'd be super fun. I'll probably start January with that. I'd also like to do some more art commentary videos. I kind of like talking to the internet. There's something weirdly calming about it. I'm definitely going to keep experimenting with animation on TikTok, Reels, and Shorts. I also want to paint more. I focused more on digital art this year, but it was also fun painting. I'd love to keep working with gouache and watercolors. I bought a few art books that I think would be really good to reference and maybe do a few more art studies with. I'd also like to take more art classes. I've only taken two this year. I did learn a lot, but I should probably take more. There's only so much I can learn on my own. And I might be dreaming a bit large here, but I think I'd like to make a quote unquote big animation video using Blender Grease Pencil. I've watched a few videos, uh, but it seems very daunting right now. Who knows, maybe by this time next year I'll be a pro. I want to get better at storyboarding and world building for sure, and this seems like a great way to do that. Oh, and I should make more TikTok reels and shorts because that's just the way things are going now. <laughs> I really surprised myself this year. I was very scared of posting art online initially. I was in my head about things, dealing with anxiety, fearing mean comments, or worse, no engagement. Also, 2022 just didn't feel like a good year for artists. With the rise of TikTok videos, NFTs, and now AI art, it's just been hard adjusting and finding an audience when the algorithm seems to change on a daily basis. Trends come and go so fast, and having a TikTok reel or short blow up almost feels like playing the lottery now. We're not followed based on quality of work, it's more quantity based. Others still manage to make it look easy, but it's been a major challenge for me. Either way, I surprise myself with consistency regardless of engagement, and I'm very happy with that. I know I just listed a lot of things, but I have high hopes for next year. And with that, here is the final reveal. 